Hey guys, Buildzoid here, and today um, we're going to be doing a video that I can't believe I have to do this, but basically I woke up today and I had a bunch of messages from Steve from Gamers Nexus uh, complaining about some of the unforeseen consequences of my uh, responding to comments from Gamers Nexus AM4 Motherboard Roundup video. Um, mostly consequences of stuff I said in the video. So the first thing I want to address is, well, Steve was kind of unhappy with me calling his channel very normy, um, which I would like to clarify that I didn't mean that Steve's content is very normy. I meant his audience is very normy, which, like, it is, because even my audience is very normy. Um, and my content is like, which I guess that, 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 that leads to the sort of... That, that that explains like the my view counts going up and down wildly depending on if I make content that caters to the majority of my audience or if I make content that I actually find interesting. Um, but uh, anyway, so yeah, like one, I was mostly referring, like I was basically referring to the audience in that scenario. The other thing is I don't really find normie as a very offensive term, okay? Like I don't consider it very offensive because it's like, like, it's like saying, oh my god, you're so normal, right? Oh my god, you're such a normie is the same as, like, oh my god, you're so normal, which is, like, that's, like, the least insulting insult I've ever heard. And so I really don't see it as, as a very offensive term, because, like, what, would you rather be abnormal? Like, yeah. Um, and so, you know, if if that offended anybody, I'm very sorry about that, but I'm going to keep using the term cuz I I still find it absolutely hilarious to call something like I like I find it a funny term to use. So I'm going to keep using normie, but uh I didn't really mean any offense with it. Like it, it's just kind of like yeah. So anyway, so that's kind of that. Um hopefully that makes sense to people and I don't need to justify it any more than that. Um, so no offense, you know, meant, but I just find, find it funny to, to refer to something or someone or a group of people as a bunch of normies. <laughs> Cause yeah, I do, uh, I do just kind of find that funny. Um, and it's worth noting that like one of, you know, the sort of goals of my channel is to normalize competitive overclocking and get more people into it. So if anything, I'm trying to turn my very niche hobby into a more normal or normy hobby, if you will. So obviously, I don't actually consider the, the like, I don't see the term as very offensive. Anyway, um, the other thing I w would like to address is um, sort of uh, the editing and the, the time limit on the video. So in my video, sort of in this area, around 55 minutes, I complain kind of a lot about the fact that I wasn't allowed to make this video 40 minutes long. But the thing is, um, I agreed to the 30 minute limit and I completely understand why the 30 minute limit exists. And it's not like, it's not like Steve hates 40 minute videos. It's just a case of Steve has a, has a channel to run. And as a YouTube channel, you know, the, the goal of every YouTube channel is, it, is to get a lot of this stuff right here, also known as views. And unfortunately, YouTube viewers uh, don't click on videos that are longer than 29.59. Okay, so that's why there's a 30 minute time limit on, gamer, on, on videos that I make for Gamers Nexus, because Steve actually cares about getting views. Now you might be like, but Buildzoid, your video is an hour, like you make videos that are like upwards of an hour long sometimes. Yeah, I don't care about views that much. That's not to say I don't care at all, but I don't care that much. Um, I have enough, like, I, in my opinion, the number of views I'm getting is enough views. If I feel that I need to get more views, I will maybe consider not producing ridiculously long videos about incredibly niche topics. Until that day comes, we're going to continue with the incredibly long, unedited, rambly videos about topics that most people don't, most normies don't care about. There, I'm going to keep doing that. Anyway, um, um, if I keep using the word normie, eventually it's going to sound weird if I keep doing that. I should probably lay off of it. Anyway, um, so yeah, so the 30 minute video, like the 30 minute limit, I agreed to it. 
if I was actually if I had if I actually had that much of a problem with the 30 minute limit, I wouldn't have made a 30 minute video. Okay? And a well 31 minute video for them to edit down into 29 minutes. And that's the other thing I want to address. Um so the the which like I I guess it kind of like cuz I said that I sent them a 31 minute video, they edited it down to 29 minutes, which makes it sound like they didn't do a lot of work on the video, which isn't true. Okay, because basically what Gamers Nexus uh, editing my videos uh, is is focused on is remove like is fixing my abil my inability to complete a sentence, right? Like I've already done it multiple times in this video right now. I've done it in every video on my channel that's, that has ever been released. I don't. I'm not very good at starting sentences, finishing sentences, or just generally sentences. Um, and so a lot of the editing work that goes into a video that I shoot for Gamers Nexus is just making me sound more coherent. Um, and that means a lot of, you know, chopping out me getting stuck on words and me getting stuck, like, filler words and that kind of thing um, throughout the video. So that takes a lot of effort, right? Because you need to chop out little bits and pieces of the video and then you make have to make sure it doesn't sound, like, robotic and cut up and, and horrible. So... You know, a lot of work goes into getting the video down from 31 minutes to 29 minutes without actually removing any content and just making me sound like, well, less like me. Um, <laughs> and making me sound more, more, co uh, mo more coherent there. Um, at the same time, the whole reason I brought up the whole thing with like 31 minutes, um, that I sent them a 31 minute video and they made it made it 29 minutes long is because I got offended, which so like I got offended and then offended Steve, I guess, by, you know, sort of like because it sounds like I'm belittling the work that they're doing by saying that, hey, I sent them a 31 minute video and they turned it into 29. Like, no, nah, that's 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 a lot of effort. <laughs> right. Um, but the thing is, I got offended because we have like the, the original video gets comments like, I'm not gonna lie, you guys being able to edit Buildzoids and Buildzoids endless ramblings into a relatively short video is amazing. Except I never sent them endless ramblings. Do you realize how much freaking time and effort goes into me getting from you know, what I naturally like to produce, which is like 40 plus minute videos, down to a 30 minute video? Very difficult. Very, very difficult for me. So I got really offended at this because this is like, I didn't send them a 50 minute video that got chopped down into 29 minutes. No, I, I spent sent them a 31 minute video and there was multiple takes and multiple different versions of multiple different motherboards in, in, the, in the video, like in the list of motherboards in, for the video. There was many different mixes because I was desperately trying to figure out how to one, get the video into 30 bloody minutes, two, justify all of the motherboards that are in the video. Uh, and, and well, actually that's kind of the only two things that, that were more, yeah, that I struggled with was just like figuring, well, no, and three, figuring out which motherboards I want to include. Right. So, yeah. Anyway, so basically, like, you know, the the editing work that goes into to turning one of my thirty one minute takes into a twenty nine minute video, this is, a, this is it's a lot more work than it sounds like because they're basically trying to fix my inability to speak. Um, and then for me. Making a 31 minute video about 12 motherboards is actually really hard. And I think it is 12, right? One, two, okay, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Yes, 12 motherboards. So if I spoke for three minutes about every single one of these motherboards, that would be a 36 minute video. It's like hard, okay? Very hard for me to not speak for more than like two minutes per board. Um, Especially considering how bad I am at putting together sentences. So the last thing I want to address is that people are uh, apparently like Steve's been getting message like comments on this video accusing him of censoring me, um, and he's been removing them. Um, so I'm I'm like I can't find a lot of those at this point, but I did find this one right here, and we're just going to address the second point because I don't feel like dealing with the first point there. So this is not BZ channel. BZ is just Mobo guy with his own channel. He is a, just a guest here, and he probably had to include all major brands because of GN Directive. And now I'm offended again. 
Because if Steve actually gave me a GN directive, as you call it, I, my life would have been so much easier because I would have just had to go like, okay, so instead of having to figure out wh why each motherboard on the list is in the bloody list, entirely on, you know, merit alone, um, and coming up with some system of, you know, measuring said merits of each motherboard, um, I could have just had a nice little list from Gamers Nexus, which would have said, okay, you have to include one Asus motherboard, you have to include, uh, well, actually, we have 12 motherboards, so you have to include three ASRock motherboards, three Gigabyte motherboards, three MSI motherboards, and three Asus motherboards. You know, if, if Steve sent me something like that over, my life would have been so much easier, because instead of trying to figure out why to justify the existence of every single one of these 12 motherboards in this list, in this video, I could have just you know, not done that because there was a brand quota, which there wasn't. So instead, I spent for freaking ever trying to figure out which motherboards make sense for the average normie Gamers Nexus channel viewer. Um, and again, I don't mean to call, like, I don't mean normie as an offensive term, but it's just like, if you're, you know, if you stick a Ryzen 5 5600X into your motherboard and then maybe remember, to, maybe remember to enable your XMP profile, maybe even enable PBO, like, you're a freaking normie. <laughs> like, that's the most normal, you know, applic- Actually, no. More normal is if you would forget to enable your XMP profile. As far as I know, that's actually very common for most people to just buy XMP memory and then not enable the XMP profile, because why would you actually take advantage of what you paid for, right? Um, that would be more normie. But, like, yeah. So, the, the amount of time and effort that I put into freaking, you know, compiling a list of motherboards that are supposed to appeal to people who don't... Because the thing, like, who don't just care about overclocking, and, and then somebody goes like, oh, it's because of the GN directive, and it's just like, no. Also, the other issue is you thinking that, like, if... Like, that I would make videos if Steve did give me a brand quota. Like, hell no. <laughs> if, I had a, if I had a quota of how, ma how, how many boards from each brand had to be in the video, there wouldn't be a video. I would have just made the video on my own channel. Anyway, um, then we have this this lovely part right here, which is BZ said on his channel in his follow-up video where he is commenting comments on this video that he would never bought any of the boards except maybe two of them. Okay, so let's let's go through the reasoning for why I wouldn't buy most of the motherboards in this list. Okay, so first up, this motherboard right here is actually very similar to the motherboard currently being used to record this video. Um, I have an MSI X470 Gaming Pro Carbon. The main problem I have with the B550A Pro is that, well, it doesn't support, uh, it doesn't have two X8 slots connected to the CPU. So my really dodgy capture card wouldn't be very, like, wouldn't actually work on it very well, probably. Um, but that's like, that's like a me problem. That's not a normie problem. That's a buildzoid problem. You know, um, same, actually, I'd, I'd, have, I'd have the same issue with the AORUS Pro, but hey, let's say I wasn't me and I didn't make YouTube videos and I didn't use my dodgy capture card. Um, I shouldn't call it dodgy. It does, like, it just, it hates running through chipsets, okay, which, like, it still does a great job of capturing video at the resolutions I need. Sometimes it drops out, so it's not actually that bad, but anyway. Like, my capture card hates chipsets, so I can't run it through a chipset. So I need a motherboard with PCIe switches. Anyway, this also doesn't have them, unfortunately. But if I didn't have my capture card, or maybe I had a capture card that did work through a chipset, um, I, either of these boards would have been completely fine with me. Now, this right here, actually probably also completely fine with me. Again, if, if my capture card wasn't my capture card, this would be fine. Um... For my daily system, honestly, the X570 Tai Chi, I think at one point in time I was actually th considering sticking the X570 Tai Chi in my daily system, but then I got the great opportunity to trade it away for a very rare GPU, so I did. Um, well, not very rare, but pretty rare GPU, so I did. Um, ASRock X570 Creator, straight up too expensive. $500, I'm not paying $500 for a motherboard to put it in my daily system, are you kidding me? 
Um, especially since I don't need 10 gig LAN or Thunderbolt 3. Um, but those are features that I do see people regularly ask about. Like, I've had people send me messages going like, hey, Buildzoid, what motherboard has Thunderbolt or whatever? And it's like, mm. there's like two of them. There's the B550 Vision D from Gigabyte, and there's the X570 Creator from ASRock. And the Creator also has the 10 gig LAN, and so I thought, hey, it's a good combination of like workstation, high-end, 10 gig LAN motherboard. Because 10 gig LAN is a pretty uncommon feature on X570, and there are people who do want 10 gig LAN. So I was trying to sort of appeal to everybody here. And this motherboard really is like meant for, you know, high price works. Like this is meant for people with a 5950X workstation applications. Um, so these people don't care that it's $500. Anyway, and then there's the Tai Chi, which I st like, here's the thing. the I don't like overclocking on the Tai Chi, but the like the the issues with overclocking on the like it's still going to run 3800 cl14 even on four memory sticks the main problem i have with the tai chi is that uh i like msi's bios better not even gigabytes gigabyte bios is actually straight up worse at this point than asrock bios in terms of navigate navigatability um in terms of bugginess i think it depends on which specific bios version you're looking at for each of the vendors at this point um, and then in terms of like, so basically I get, like the Tai Chi would actually be completely fine in my daily system, except I would just get a cheaper motherboard instead. Um, yeah, I would probably just go for a cheaper board. So, and then for the MATX boards, well, guess what, dude, I don't build MATX systems, so I wouldn't be buying MATX motherboards cause I don't build MATX systems. Oh my god! <laughs> um, and same goes for these boards. And then ITX, like, the only reason I have an interest in ITX is the weird memory over... Like, is the really good memory overclocking capabilities. But if I was building a, per like, a, a gaming system, I wouldn't use an ITX board. Or maybe I would. I don't know. Like, this, this is just, like, ITX is a segment that, you know, I pay attention to because it's cool for memory overclocking, not because I'm a massive fan of the ITX form factor. Though it does make storing all the different motherboards I have a bit easier if some of them are ITX. Anyway, um, so that's kind of that. And if, if I was gearing this, this list towards motherboards that I like in terms of overclocking, the list would basically be X570 Aorus Master, B550 Unify X, and the B550 Vision D. Because screw you if you want a motherboard that's less than $200. Also, screw you if you want a motherboard with four DIMM slots. And screw you if you can't navigate the Gigabyte BIOS. Um, you know, or you need more more than th six SATA ports. Well, th screw you. We, we don't do more than six SATA ports. Which is, in my opinion, one of the highlight features for an X570 motherboard. Because otherwise, you can just get a B550. Um... Anyway, so I would never bought any of these boards except maybe two of them. Honestly, like me. So, so this right here is just like like me not being a fan of the boards that I write, like me yeah, me not being absolutely in love with the motherboards that I recommended doesn't mean the boards are bad. It just means I, like, have weird values. Because the reason, like, the biggest advantage you get with the Aorus Master X570 in terms of overclocking compared to a Tai Chi is that the X570 Master on the new revision of the PCB will do upwards of DDR4-5000, which is completely impractical for the average user or normie user because most memory sticks don't go to five the ddr4 or 5000 um most cpus can barely function at ddr4 or 5000 the performance at ddr4 or 5000 isn't actually that good anyway so the only reason you go up there is to take a screenshot of oh my god look at my memory my ram is faster than your cpu um and uh well, that's it. Like, there's no real practical need for the memory overclocking capabilities of a motherboard like the Aorus, X5, uh, Aorus Master X570 or the MSI B550 Unify X. They're really cool motherboards if you're into overclocking, 
But, you know, if you're just doing a daily gaming build and at most you're going to enable like a 3800 CL14 XMP, which incidentally is going to be easier to set up on an ASRock motherboard than on a Gigabyte motherboard because you won't have to go digging through the sub menus to find the bloody FCLK setting. Um, yeah, there's like no difference <laughs> between a Tai Chi and a Master at frequencies that most people would actually run. Um... Oh, and then we have this guy here with, he is justifying Tai Chi over Master because of price, but I got my Master on promotion for 50 euro cash back. So the price was the same as the Tai Chi. Well, how very fortunate for you. Unfortunately, uh, you being able to find a, a Master on a 50 euro discount doesn't mean everybody else is also able to find a Master on a 50 euro discount. Hey, some people might be able to find the Tai Chi on a bigger discount than you found your Master on. So, one of the restrictions I set for myself with this list is that I'm mostly going by MSRPs. And I did make the mistake of uh, saying that the Tai Chi is $270 instead of $300. But that's, you know, uh, like, yeah, that's my bad. Um, anyway, so this, this comment right here just, like, y you have no idea how annoyed I am by this. Like, because... I go through so much freaking effort to put together a list of motherboards <laughs> that isn't just my, like, first, you know, knee-jerk reaction of, like, somebody asked what X570 motherboard, and I, my, like, because my knee-jerk reaction for motherboard recommendations is somebody asks for an X570, and I'll recommend this. Because um, the thing is, a cheaper, like, because here, 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 fun fact, I'll let you, let you in on a little secret. Um, if you're buying a Ryzen 5 5600X, okay, um, that 5600X is going to perform exactly the same on a B550A Pro as it is on a X570 Master or an X570 Extreme. Um, so... Like, that's like under most circumstances, your goal should be to get the cheapest motherboard that has the features you require. And so that's what I geared this list towards. Um, because then, if you have a cheaper motherboard, you can invest into things that actually make a difference in terms of performance. Like better RAM, or better CPU cooling, or a better GPU, or a better power supply. Like, obvious, like, you know, the best solution would have been if this video could have been, like, well, like, one idea I suggested is that it could have been split up into ATX boards and then MATX and ITX separately, but the problem is MATX and ITX are so niche that it won't get any views. Like, it, it again comes back to the issue of the 30-minute timer where it's like, but those don't get any views. <laughs> so, it's just like, like, you can't win in this situation. You just can't win. Similarly, you can't have a motherboard that does everything and also doesn't cost an arm and a leg. And even then, like, even if you buy, like, one of the $700 X570 motherboards, like, the godlike doesn't have a rear I.O. as far as I'm concerned. There's five USB ports back there. Like, that's just straight up terrible. Um, like, I'd come, that's so bad that even on, like, low, lower cost motherboards, I'm, I'm, like, that, that's a problem in my opinion. Um... And then if you look at, like, the X570 or X Extreme, well, what if you suddenly need eight SATA drives? And you can't do that, because that board only does six. So, yeah. Choosing a motherboard is far more about figuring out what you need your motherboard to do than it is about dumping as much money as you can afford to on a motherboard. Um... And I am so annoyed that, like, somebody thinks that, like, Steve has any control over what motherboards end up in the video. <laughs> so. Yeah. Um, screw this guy. Like, seriously. Screw you. Um, and that's it. That's all I have to say on this topic. 
hopefully I've made myself clear on on how this works. Like, I stand by every single motherboard recommendation I made in this video. Um, sure, I personally wouldn't buy most of, well, probably any of these motherboards just because they don't quite fit the niche usage scenarios that I normally run into. Well, like my personal system being, you know, kind of niche in terms of its requirements. Um, though the Tai Chi would actually work in my daily system just fine. I just don't like the $300 price tag. And I'd like, yeah, I don't really like the $300 price tag in that scenario. Um, it's not like there's like, the, the funny thing is though, that the next cheapest motherboard that does what I need for my daily system. Actually, I think there's one that does it at like 240 yeah, so, that, like, you don't really have a great option for mother... You don't have great options for motherboards with uh, dual X8 PCIe slots off of the CPUs that aren't, like, over $250. But, uh... But, again, like, that, most people don't need to run. Like, the reason why... I, I'm not going to get into this. Um, yeah, so, there. That, that's it. Like... The, the comments about me getting, like, bullied into making a 30-minute video, because I also saw somebody say that, is, like, this is just straight up not true. I agreed to the 30-minute time limit. I don't like the 30-minute time limit, but it's not Steve's fault that I can't make a 40-minute a video. It's, it's the algorithms. It's the YouTube algorithm's fault. So, you know, like, like I get it. <laughs> I get why we can't have a 40-minute video on Gamers Nexus. Um... And I am incredibly fortunate that they are willing to, you know, take a 31 minute video and then chop it down into 29 minutes and, and make me sound coherent for once. And like, yeah, um, there's also no censorship here. There's absolutely no freaking censorship. Like, how dare you even suggest that? So, there. Anyway, I'm just going to end the video at this point. Because, um... I don't want to think about this anymore. This is so stupid. Like... I can't even make light heart... Uh, like... I, I can't even make, like, admittedly bad jokes about stuff in my own videos without somebody thinking that, like, Steve is bullying me into making videos about motherboards I don't like uh, at lengths that I dislike. Like... No, <laughs> like, if I actually had that much of a problem with this, the video wouldn't freaking exist. I keep wanting to hit the like button, but I'm not signed in. <laughs> it's hard to, hard to resist that. Anyway, I'll actually hit the stop button at this point. So, yeah, sorry for wasting your, your time and uh, goodbye.